Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video course where we explain a lot about vectors, matrices and so on. And now finally today in part 39 we will talk about the Gaussian elimination. This is the important algorithm to solve a system of linear equations and it's named after the German mathematician Karl Friedrich Gauss. However, here it's important to note that the whole algorithm is much older than Gauss himself simply because it's a very natural process to solve a system of linear equations. Indeed, this is exactly what we will see in this video today. But before we start with the essential part, let me first thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And as you know, as a supporter you can download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Ok, and with that I would say we are ready to formulate the goal of the Gaussian elimination. And maybe at this point I can already tell you there are a lot of different names for the same algorithm. So for example, instead of Gaussian elimination, some people just say row reduction. Indeed, this is a fitting name because it describes exactly what happens when we want to solve a system AX is equal to B. So please recall what we want to use are row operations. More precisely, we want to apply these row operations to the augmented matrix AB and we want to transform it into a nicer form, for example into an upper triangular form. In fact, this idea we have already discussed in a former video and maybe let's look at an example now. Indeed, here you see we have transformed the system AB into an upper triangular form. Which means that below this diagonal here we only find zeros. In other words, the essential entries of A form a triangle. Moreover, please note for this description here, the transformed vector B on the right hand side does not play a role. Therefore, now you can remember, it would be nice if we can transform the matrix A into such an upper triangular form. The reason for that is simply that then we can solve the system by backwards substitution. It's a fancy name for a simple process because it just tells you that you start at the bottom and solve the system step by step. Actually, how this explicitly works I can immediately show you by starting with the third row. And there you should know the third row just represents the equation 3 times x3 is equal to 1. In other words, this triangular form here tells us immediately what the last variable is. This means the solution of the system necessarily needs that x3 is equal to 1 third. Hence, in this case, only two variables remain to solve. However, we see that this is not harder than before because we can use our fact here that x3 is equal to 1 third. We just have to put it into the equation of the second row. This one reads 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. Hence, after putting in the number for x3, the only thing that remains is an equation with one variable. So, we conclude that we now know which value x2 has to have. In fact, in this case it also turns out that it has to be one third. But of course, the exact numbers are not important here just to process how this backward substitution works. Because now we are able to put both numbers into the first row. And there, please see that the equation reads x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 1. And now we simply put in both results from before. And then again, we just have an equation with one variable. Therefore, we are now able to solve the system for x1. And indeed, with this, we get the whole solution set of the system. So you see, backward substitution is very simple, we can just do it. Therefore, the essential part of solving the system is to bring AB into an upper triangular form. However, now I have to tell you, this is not always possible. Maybe you immediately see, this triangular form is too special because it needs a square matrix here. But of course, there is a more general concept that also works for non-square matrices. And this is the so-called row echelon form. Indeed, this one generalizes this upper triangular form, but we will define this in more detail in another video. 
Here we first focus how the Gaussian elimination works. Okay, and here at the end, as a last step, I should add that we want to construct a solution set. First, the solution set of the transformed system, but we already know this is the same as the solution set of the original system. Okay, then I would say, before we look at the general algorithm, let's first consider an example. In fact, I would say the example explains the algorithm in the best way. Therefore, let's start here with a system of linear equations. A not so complicated one, but still interesting one, could have three equations with three variables. And now you already know, as always, we want to put this into the matrix form. So not a problem for us, this here is our augmented matrix now, and now we want to bring the left hand side here to the triangular form. And indeed, we will do this by using our row operations. Therefore, we start with the first column and now we want to generate zeros here below the first entry. More precisely, we will use the first row and add multiples of the first row to the other rows. So for example, here for the second row we have to subtract 1 times the first row. Because then we see that this 2 here eliminates this 2 there. So exactly what we want. We want a zero at this position. Okay, and then we can immediately do the same for the third row. There we have to subtract three times the first row. Because then we have minus six and this plus six that gets us to zero. Okay, so you see we don't change the first row but all the other rows are now changed. So I would say let's go through all the numbers. First we have a zero here, then we have minus three minus one, so minus four and 7 minus minus 1, so 8. And on the right hand side we have minus 4. Okay, similarly we can do the same for the third row here, so we have a 0 there. And then we subtract 9 from 13, so 4 remains. And then we have minus 1 and minus 3 in the last entry. So now you see, we have generated the zeros where we want to have them. Moreover, the whole problem now is reduced to a smaller matrix. Indeed, we will not change anything around the red box anymore. Hence, that's something you can remember, the whole algorithm works in this step-by-step -step sense until we have reached the smallest matrix. Or in other words, now the only thing that remains is to generate a zero here. And please recall, we don't use the first row anymore, so the second row is now the row we need to use. More precisely, we add 1 times the second row to the third row. And of course, this is the only thing we have to do. Now we need to calculate these numbers in the new third row. So first it's the 0 as we wanted, and then we see we have 7. And on the right hand side we have minus 7. Okay, very good. Now you see we have reached the triangular form as we want it. And at this point we already know the system is essentially solved, because we only have to do the backwards substitution. And how this one works we have already discussed above, so I just show you the solution steps here. So first we get that x3 is minus 1 and then we get that x2 is also minus 1. And finally, then it turns out that x1 is equal to 3. So you see, this whole thing was a nice example, because we got out a unique solution of the whole system. Hence, the set of solutions is just a set with one element. And this is the element given as the vector 3 minus 1 minus 1. So it's important, after the backward substitution, to write the element in the correct order again. Okay, and with that I would say we are now ready to write down the general concept of the Gaussian elimination. This should not be complicated anymore, because now you know all the row operations and our goal. So you see, on the left hand side in general we would have an m times n matrix A, and on the right hand side we have a vector B with m components. So starting the elimination process here means that we want to generate zeros here. Therefore, we need to make sure that this upper number here is not zero. Because you remember, this is the number we want to subtract from all the other numbers in the same column. 
Hence, for some cases, first you need to do some row exchanges until you have a non-zero number here in the upper corner. However, of course, it can also happen that you only have zeros in the first column here. But this means you are already finished, you don't have to eliminate anything. Hence, in this case, you can immediately go to the next step to the smaller matrix here. Ok, but for all other cases, let's write down this first elimination step. And in order to do that, let's give the rows some better names. So maybe as often, let's simply call them alpha1t, alpha2t and so on. So then, let's formulate the first step by subtracting the correct multiple of the first row. Hence, we don't change the first row alpha1t, but we change all the other ones. So let's start with the second row and there you see the multiple we need is given with the coefficient a21. And we have to divide it by a11. And there you see, it's important that this one is non-zero. So there you have it, this is the first row operation for the second row. And now we can do a similar one for each of the other rows. So for example, the last one would be given by the coefficient am1. So not so complicated, you just put the coefficients together such that you can generate zeros in the first column. So very good, there you see, these are all the row operations we need to generate our zeros in the first column. And then you already know, for the next step, we just ignore the first column and the first row and just consider this new matrix here. And then we do exactly the same as here, which means we have to check if this entry here is actually not zero. If it is, we just do our row exchanges before. Therefore, we can just say, continue iteratively until you reach the step where only one row or one column remains. And indeed, what we then have reached is the so-called row echelon form of the given matrix. And as we have discussed it before, for some special cases, this is just an upper triangular form. However, how the general form looks like, we will discuss in the next video. However, before that, and if you want to see more examples for this Gaussian elimination, I have two videos about the LU decomposition and the PLU decomposition you can watch now. In fact, both decompositions are just a Gaussian elimination from another point of view. Therefore, these two examples fit nicely into this series now. So you can watch the videos now and then I hope that I see you in the next video here when we talk about the row echelon form. So have a nice day and bye.